Hey everybody, I'm Mike Levy again. We're here in Reno for Interbike 2018 and I'm here with a pretty special bike and a pretty interesting guy. This is Chris Garcia from SD Wheelworks and he had a big hand in this year, very special bike. This is a land speed record bike. Chris, how fast did it go? Uh, we went 183.9 this uh, this week at Bonneville, breaking the record, shattering the record, really. Only 183.9. That's not even 200. <laughs> the, he set the bar so high. <laughs> I start actually connected to the bicycle, and from the first mile and a half, I'm connected in order to be able to turn the gear over because it's a very large single gear. You're being pulled by the car. I'm, be I'm being pulled for the first mile and a half of the five mile course. So for three and a half miles, I'm under my own power in that air pocket. I'm always behind the car, but I'm disconnected and I continue to increase in speed from the release all the way until mile marker five. But the bike itself is pretty special. It's a carbon frame and you actually piece this together. Correct. Yeah, I, I uh, kind of piece together the weird amalgam of this bike. and. It's part uh, motorcycle stuff, it's part downhill bike stuff, and the rest of it's com uh, custom uh, componentry. So the frame, it's a full carbon frame. It's obviously extremely custom. Um, and the front wheel, that's a motorcycle wheel. Why is that? Well, uh, the big challenge is the rubber. So we had to figure out how to make the rubber go fast. There's a standard bicycle tire wouldn't do it, it just explode. Yeah. So the rims were built around the rubber and the bicycle was built around the rims. So and how did you end up solving that problem with the rubber? Uh, we did some uh, creative brainstorming and found some Thai drag, drag scooters and Nostalgia Series dragsters here in the U.S. are running uh, spoked wheels and figured that those tires would probably make a really good uh, fit for this application because they go over 300 miles an hour in some cases. So when you're going up to speed, is there a point where you get to a certain speed like 100 miles an hour, 150 miles an hour where it calms down or is it always just like, I just picture it being super hectic. Actually, what's interesting is the faster we go, the more the air from behind is pushing forward. So it actually becomes ever so slightly easier because there's more of a push from behind. You ended up with a 17-inch front wheel then, a 17-inch motorcycle rim, spoked motorcycle or scooter tire. Correct. And also a profile mountain bike hub. Yes, uh, we've got something weird. It's a, a motorcycle dragster uh, tire with uh, 1970s motorcycle rims. We have 12 gauge fill width hubs laced to a, uh, a profile racing through axle uh, downhill uh, hub. And that's an X Fusion RV1 fork on the front, it looks like. <laughs> it's dropped in travel. How much travel? Uh, this has about an inch and a half of travel. That's it. Inch and a half. So the rest of the stanchion tubes that you see there, that's just to preserve the geometry. Uh, to preserve the geometry and really we went with this fork because we wanted a triple crown fork. There's a bump bar at the very front of the vehicle here, and it, or at front of my bicycle, and you can see the damage here. That was when I was bumped up against the bump bar on the vehicle. And when we exit, our exit speed was 183.4, and she took me down to 110 miles an hour within one mile, bumped up so hard behind the vehicle that that was one of the scariest moments of the whole thing because I had no control. And there's also a hook here. So am I right in thinking that this is for her to pull up to speed Correct. and then she pulls this lever to release it? Yeah, we've got a, uh, a release here. She uh, gets pulled up to approximately 120 or 130 miles an hour. I haven't figured that out yet. Yeah. And uh, releases when she's comfortable and then pedals herself all the way up to speed. From 120 or 30, she's going up to 183 under her own steam behind the draft of the car. Yes, that's correct. So the other interesting thing down here, there's a, what would you call this, dual drive? Uh, we call it a double gear reduction system, and it's basically um, two drivetrains stacked on top of each other. We've got a 60 tooth that goes over to a 12, from a 60 tooth to a 12, and it, that essentially equates to about 135 foot per crank revolution rollout. So it's kind of a tall, tall gear, just a little bit. It's pretty much impossible to ride unless you're going 100 miles an hour. <laughs> okay. All right. So in the center here, we could see there's a southern, another bottom bracket shell, and it's it's on a slotted mount. It, usually, like a tandem would have this kind of drivetrain, and they would use an eccentric, eccentric bottom bracket shell to adjust the tension of the timing chain. You're doing a little bit differently, aren't you? Uh, yeah, it's a little different setup, and it, it was done for two, two different reasons. Um, one, it's simpler to do it like that instead of coming out with an eccentric system. It's easier just to slide it back. And two, um, we originally had what's called a sproter, which was a brake connected to the sprocket, but we've since done away with that to simplify it. 
she didn't end up needing that brake, right? She really needs very little brake. I mean, I have a brake on there, and that's just for emergency situations to get away from the car. There's not even a disc brake on this bike. It's just a V-brake. So I imagine when it's time to slow down, she pulls out, she uses the wind to slow down. Yeah, that's correct. How much does it weigh? Uh, this weighs approximately 35 pounds. Uh, it's not about how light it is, really. It's about how efficient, uh, efficiently she can transfer energy to the pedals. Yeah. And that's why we use carbon. Okay. And the steering damper as well up front to keep it steady. Correct, yeah, she's got a steering stabilizer up there, uh, originally used to um, kind of help challenged athletes uh, still ride when they say have one arm. Yep. So it keeps her steady at 180 miles an hour. So you hit your max speed, what's next? Do you know you hit your max speed? Is there something that tells you you've hit your goal? I do have a bicycle computer on there, but there's really no ability for me to look down at that at this at because I'm buffeting so left and right. It is about survival when you're back there. You don't casually look down almost 200 miles an hour. Yeah, no. All right, everybody. So that's a close look at Denise Korenik's Land Speed Record Bike. If you want to subscribe, click up here. If you want to watch more videos, click down there.